Hello everyone, welcome to Lucy's Art Club in June, um, where every month we choose a theme to inspire us to create. And the intention is to um, learn new things and to keep the inspiration going and to keep creating. So this month, our theme is monochrome. Google's definition of monochrome is a photograph or picture developed or executed in black and white or in varying tones of only one color. So that means we have one color, either black and white, varying shades of gray, you can choose another color in a different scale of values. So we're going to create paintings that are mostly done in one color. You, it can be different shades of gray, or a pink or yellow or blue, um, anything that you fancy. And you will see in the example artworks that, you know, um, those paintings are done in mostly one color, but sometimes the artist will add just a touch of a contrasting color or something. Although the uh, examples I show you are paintings, and I do encourage you to explore painting um, monochrome, feel free to, you know, um, do drawings in charcoal or ink if you choose, and any medium you choose. So let's see some examples. The first famous painting that came to my mind, of course, is Picasso's Guernica. This is, you know, just black and white, but um, I haven't seen it in person, but from what I've heard and watch YouTube videos and that kind of things, it's, um, you know, we know a very powerful painting and it's just by its grand scale, like the size, you know. Um, so anyways, this is just to start with, we have a really big and kind of complicated black and white painting to start with. But of course, we don't have to go to um, that extreme. We can start with some simple black and white paintings. So this one that I just painted um, is a black and white oil painting. And it's quite loosely painted, as you can see. I um, thought of, you know, adding a little bit, uh, a glaze of a little bit of color on the portrait, but after I completed it and added the pattern on her face, I kind of felt like it was complete. So this is just totally done in black and white um, and paints gray, ivory black, white, and paints gray. And I also have this example by my friend Katrina to show you. As you can see, this is also a monochromatic painting, basically in black and white, probably a cooler black, like paints gray, and she used acrylic and some mixed media. And we are not just restricted to grays and blacks in our monochromatic painting. As you can see in this beautiful painting by Katrina, we have varying um, degrees, varying shades of blue, so varying values of blue. So this is also another, so think about using other colors for your monochromatic painting. And talking about blues, that reminds me of Picasso's blue period. And you can see this is a painting that's mostly in varying values of blues. And then he added a touch of yellow, um, a pretty muted and neutral kind of yellow as a little bit of contrast color. And also in this sunflower bear by Van Gogh, we can see that it's mostly varying degrees of yellows. And then a pop, just a tiny touch of a, like a greenish green. As you can see, it's still a pretty monochromatic painting with just a touch of a little bit of blue and green. I find that one trick, if you will, to add a touch of color to your monochromatic painting is to underpaint your surface, whether canvas or board, with a contrasting color. In my case, I'm underpainting it with probably cadmium orange or some kind of orange, um, a bright color. Um, I wait for that underpainting to dry and then I just paint the overpainting in black and white and varying degrees of gray. And then I just use a bamboo skewer to scrape back into my underpainting. And that reveals some of the um, underlying colors. Another way to add a pop of color to your monochromatic painting is that, like what my friend um, Olga Furman is doing here, you paint your painting in monochrome, and then you just add a pop of color by, for example, adding a flower that is or many flowers, you can add many flowers and then also why not bring a little bit of that red 
into your face. And if you want to go a little bit more colorful, I think this self-portrait by Van Gogh is a really good example. Most this painting, as you can see, is mostly in varying degrees of like a more neutral kind of blue, right? And then he added his um, complement, which is orange, and it's also pretty um, more muted in a way. So you can use mostly one color and then add a touch of its complementary. And this is another one by my dearest Van Gogh, my dream lover. <laughs> and um, again, this is more a saturated, deeper blue, mostly. And then he add a, its contrasting color, orange. So this is more saturated than the previous one, but you can see they are um, similar in its blue and orange. One is more neutral and one is more saturated. And basically, I still feel like it can still go with a monochromatic theme, but with a touch of its um, complementary. And I did one that's inspired by that Van Gogh a um, couple of years ago. You can see it's mostly blue um, and bluish green, right? And then I added um, its complementary orange into the painting. And I use it in selected areas like the hair, the lips, you know, the eyes, and um, to deepen the shadows in the shirts. And the last one I want to show you is another painting that I did and it's mostly in you know varying tones of pink and as you can see it's inspired by Raphael and or probably a copy of his but nowhere as brilliant but I totally have fun and instead of using you know skin tones and I just, you know, uh, played around with it and used pink instead. So varying tones of pink. So another idea for you is that you can take, you know, a famous painting uh, from any of the masters and then just totally change the color scheme, change it to a monochromatic pink, orange, yellow, blues, anything you want. So I hope you have fun creating a monochromatic painting this month and I'll see you in the group.